2014, Nigerian sports witnessed some improvements and the women played a key role in that achievement. The contributions of Blessing Okawari at the Commonwealth Games, the Falconets and the Super Falcons feat at uh, African and international competitions were remarkable. In this review, our sports correspondent Austin Okunapan highlights the major activities of 2014 and the lessons for the future. Representing Nigeria, Odenai Adikoye. 2014 told a tale of many lessons to sports in Nigeria. The country had a taste of a sweet and bitter experience on and off the field. So it's a sudden out first for Nigeria. At the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, Scotland, Nigeria finished eighth on the log, winning a total of 36 medals. 11 gold, 11 silver, and 14 bronze. At the Games, Blessing Okagbari won gold in the 100 and 200 meters event. She was a shining star. The advantage, this is a real battle, but the strength of Okagbari bring it home. And Williams comes through to take the silver medal. Okagbari winning in 22.25 seconds. Administrators believe Nigerian sports can be better if some conditions are met. To move forward, there has to be a level of education for athletes. And it transcends all. I don't want to be particular about any sport now. Because if our athletes are educated, a whole lot of things that are happening to us will not be happening. All those multinational companies in this country, as part of their corporate social responsibilities, can invest in sports development so that it won't be just going to spend all the money. In the, women's long jump. The, the Commonwealth Games also showed that there are young talents in the country and exposed the need to invest more in developing them. Gold medalist Otuan Yuade Kuroye explains it better. If you spend money on an, on athletes, you have results. And that was exactly what table tennis did. The federation ensured athletes had more playing time, and the rise of Aruna Quadri attests to that. Quadri is Africa's best player and 30th in the world rankings. We used to have leagues in this country in, in the 70s. Um, here in Lagos, of course, all around the southwest and the south south. But I, I and especially, sorry, to remember the north, Kano was also a very strong hold for table tennis. But now what we're doing now is we're coming up with the idea of a new national league. We're trying to ensure that, you know, the momentum we've built is not lost. Super Eagles are testing their first defeat right here in Calabar. Nigeria will put a great wonders to the world. Nigeria will shock the world. That was Aminus Negari's prediction of 2014. And yes, football did shock Nigerians. I'm waiting for anybody to come here and tell me to step down. If any of this will be winning, it should be cancelled. With issues ranging from irregularities in the electoral process, the leadership crisis, and fire outbreak at the NFF Secretariat, football fans were left with a lot of unanswered questions. But all of this is nothing compared to the Super Eagles' failure to qualify for the 2015 African Cup of Nations. No one could explain what happened. Even could Stephen Keshi had few words for the dejected fans. What does this mean for Nigeria? Later, later, later. Later, later. Towards Ayila, and then and it's in! It was indeed a year for the women, and it gave football fans a reason to smile. The Falconets made it to the final of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. She's the top scorer. With Fasisa Toshwala giving a five-star performance. The Super Falcons also went on to win the African Women's Championship for a record seventh time. 2014 brought two major lessons to sports in Nigeria. First is that there are talents in the country, and if developed, they can compete at any level. The second is that if the country fails to fix the problems of administration, the goal of achieving greatness will only remain a mere wish. Austin Okonapan, reporting for Channels Television News. We'll take our review further now, being joined at the News at 10 by a sports administrator, a former president of the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, a former chief coach, Athletics Federation of Nigeria, Mr. Tony Urobo. You're welcome to the News at 10. Thank you very much. So, um, well, I guess we'll begin with um, your assessment of sports in Nigeria in 2014. 
Yes, um, from a professional assessment, I would say I would I would like to score sports in 2014 in a numerical way, and I would say I'll give it a 40 to 60 percent in terms of performance. Okay. I think we have done pretty average in terms of competitions all through the years. Uh, this is as a result of past inadequacies in our performances in international competitions over the years. And um, 2014 was just a resurgence of what the country is capable of doing. And if proper assessment is done, and those in charge of the sports are ready to listen to professional ad, uh, advice, then there's all hope that Nigeria has so much potential. If, if, if we pick a particular uh, a popular sport, which is football, um, I, think, I think the women must have listened to the advice that you're talking about more than the men, because they really impressed, especially at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. You see, football in particular is one sport that Ghana's mass participation and recognition. And we find that Nigeria is the biggest, blackest, black nation in the world. And when you have that kind of a population, it's expected that there's going to be a mass followership. And in terms of participation, uh, you have more talents from a country like Nigeria than a lot of the other smaller countries. Mm. And I think, and I know that it is easier, for instance, to work with the women folk than the men folk. The women are much more dedicated and they are easier to handle administratively. They follow instructions and they are more disciplined when it comes to participation, in, not just in sports alone. So uh, I'm not surprised that the women appear to have done much better than the men have done. Uh, I have handled women in the past and I know that they are particularly easier to handle when it comes to issues in sports performance and sports uh, development. Would, would that also be the reason why the Super Eagles fail to qualify for the African Cup of Nations? That is part of the reasons, but I would say it is a systems failure. Uh, a lot of people want to find out why have we failed? What has happened? Nigeria is one of the most gifted nations in the world in terms of our population, in terms of the, the human technical abilities of our male folks. But we have not been able to capitalize on this and use it to its maximum. And this is one place where I say I blame the administration. Some, some ask and say, who is exactly to blame? Um, it's how, a, sorry, how really does the administration affect this? I mean, because um, uh, this, this is just football. Uh, would, you, would you blame the, the rancor within the NFF perhaps last year uh, for some of our, the, our failures outside? Sports, it's business. And like each and every one of us knows, if you do not have the right organizational structure for your business, you pump in so much amount of money and you think that the more money you pump in, the better the business will be. It is obvious, definitely going to fail because there are technical areas in sports that need very strict disciplinary attention should be given to such areas such that once you make the mistake of putting the wrong personnel in terms of administrative leadership in such positions, you are heading for complete failure. And so the NFF in particular should be held responsible because they are the main body that organize sports. They are the ones that employ a coach. 
They are the ones that supervise the workings of the technical handling. And so once you don't have the right persons in these positions, you definitely are heading for a failure. So Tony Robo, thank you so much for expanding uh, most of these topics to us. Uh, thank you for joining us on the News at 10. Uh, I've been pleasure. speaking with Mr. Tony Urubu, a former chief coach at Athletics Federation of Nigeria, also a former president of the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, and uh, a former sp uh, sports administrator uh, with many years of experience. Sports News Now, Super Eagles coach Stephen Keshi has charged the home-based Eagles to play to instructions and show what they can do without their foreign counterparts when they confront Cote d'Ivoire and Sudan in next week's international friendlies in Abu Dhabi. Assistant coach Daniel Lamokachi will lead the team in the two friendlies against the Elephants of Cote d'Ivoire on January 11th and Falcons of Sudan on the 13th. And Coach Keshi is urging the players to show no respect to big names on the field of play. The national teams will tomorrow morning take on the National Youth Service Corps football team in a test match at the Abuja National Stadium. The game will afford the technical crew an insight into those players who will make it to the UAE for the friendlies and the overall fitness of the team. In the English FA Cup, goals from Ander Herrera and Angel de Maria set Manchester United into the fourth round at the expense of Yeovil Town. The League One side matched United for most part of the first half and had a great chance to take the lead, but Kiefer Moore scuffed his shot at David de Gia. Louis van Hall's side improved as the game went on and led when Herrera hooked a superb strike into the net. Substitute de Maria then ran through to seal the victory on his return from injury. In other games decided today in the English FA Cup, Manchester in City secured a late 2-1 victory over Sheffield on Wednesday. Uh, City did not record a shot on target. Uh, big upon in Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, City did not record a shot on target for more than an hour. The Owls uh, took the lead in the 14th minute. James Milner equalized and completed the win from close range in injury time. QPR's dismissal, a uh, dismal run in the FA Cup continued as they were beaten at home by League One side Sheffield United 3-0. Patrick van Anholt marked his return from injury with a winning goal as Sunderland beat Leeds 1-0. Chelsea beat Watford 3-0. Defending champions, Arsenal began the defence of the trophy with a hard-fought 2-0 win over Hull City. Aston Villa's Christian Benteke saved his side from embarrassment against champions, strugglers Blackpool, scoring two minutes to regulation time to secure a 1-0 win. In tennis, Poland earlier today beat Australia in straight singles matches at the Hopman Cup tournament in Perth. World number six, Agnieszka Radvanska, beat Australia's KC de la Croix 6-2, 6-3, with Radvanska dominating the opening singles match. Australia's Matt Ebden appeared to be on course to level the scores in the men's singles, but Jerzy Janowicz finally won it 3-6, 7-5, 6-love. Ebden won the first set 6-3, and the second set the Australian was serving for the match at 5-4, but Poland's Janowicz broke serve to level the scores at 5 all He held his serve in the next game and took the set 7-5 after Ebden had, doubled, had double faulted. Now, much earlier, Lucy Safarova recorded two victories to give Czech Republic a 2-1 win over Canada. Safarova defeated Eugenie Bouchard 6-4 six love, six love, in 70 minutes to give the Czechs an early 1-0 lead. Then teamed up with Adam Pavlasek to beat Bouchard and Vasek Popisil 6-4, six 6-2 six 
in the mixed doubles decider. Safarova's team mate Adam Pavlasiak could not follow her lead and was beaten 7-6-6-2 by Canada's Vasek Popisil in the men's singles to leave a tie all square. On the foreign scene, away from sports, the news of four more bodies have been recovered from the Java Sea at the scene of the ill-fated Air Asia flight QZ8501 crash. That brings to 34 the number of bodies recovered so far. Search teams are still trying to uh, find more wreckage than hampered, mainly by bad weather. Hopes were high today, but the weather improved none did not improve. Uh, conditions once again reported bad. Our teams on Saturday found four large objects thought to be debris from the plane, with the largest measuring 18 meters by 5.4 at a depth of 30 meters. Dozens of divers from Indonesia and Russia have been deployed to the search area, which has been enlarged to allow for tides, sweeping bodies and debris further afield. 20 new cardinals from Tonga, Ethiopia and Myanmar have been named by Pope Francis. He said the appointment of the cardinals and churchmen for, for, from 14 countries from every continent in the world showed the Vatican's inseparable link with Catholic churches around the world. The list of names includes five retired bishops who will join the College of Cardinals but are over 80 and so cannot take part in a papal election. This is the second time the Pope has announced the appointment of new cardinals from a wide variety of countries. Well, U.S. sanctions against North Korea following a major cyber attack on Sony Pictures have been deemed hostile by the Kim Jong-un government. As sanctions were imposed on Friday, and according to the White House, it is in response to the Sony attack. It's the first time the U.S. has punished any country for cyber attacks on a U.S. company. North Korea's state-run news agency, the KCNA, is quoted as saying today, the policy persistently pursued by the U.S. to stifle the DPRK, groundlessly stirring up bad blood towards it, would only harden its will and resolution to defend the sovereignty of the country. The new move by the United States adds to already existing sanctions against North Korea over its nuclear program. And the main news again. INEC has warned against inciting statements and violence, urging politicians to abide by the code of conduct as official flag off of campaigns begin tomorrow. And clergymen today criticized the comments credited to a Catholic priest, Reverend Father Eji Kim Baka. The priest had on two separate occasions spoken differently about President Goodluck Jonathan. And Pope Francis has named 20 new cardinals. 15 of the new appointees are under the age of 80. About 15 of those, uh, most of the cardinals are from all of the continents in the world. And that's News at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.